Our next speaker is Grant Slater, who is um, ha has been running for like over a decade the uh, OpenStreetMap infrastructure as part of the um, operations team, and he is now a full-time employee of the OpenStreetMap Foundation, and he's going to tell you some things about what goes in in the background at OpenStreetMap. Welcome, Grant. It's quite bright and shiny here. Wow. Hello, uh, I'm, I'm Grant Slater. Uh, I'm one of the sysadmins or operations team members behind the project. Uh, I've been running I've been running part of the infrastructure for OpenStreetMap as part of the team for, for quite a long time now. Uh, this is what it looked like when I started. This is a literal pic literal picture of our servers were sitting behind this, and this was where you had to stand to work on the servers that we had. This was uh, 15 years ago, or 16 years ago now. It feels it, the time has passed so quickly. But uh, it was a struggle back then, a real struggle of keeping, keeping up with the growth of OpenStreetMap and all, all lovely people mapping and the limited hardware that we had behind the project to run it. So I'm quite proud of where we've got to over the last few years. Uh, here's me standing in a, a data center where we have, have a rack of servers. And the other picture on the right-hand side is uh, uh, the, the same rack from the other side looking uh, in my biased opinion, quite neat and tidy. Uh, we have servers all over the place, and I'll, I'll get to that and give you more details. Uh, but who am I? So I am a DevOps engineer, or now termed a Site Reliability Engineer, or SRE. As was mentioned, I've been volunteering in this role for quite a long time, uh, 15 years by my call. Uh, I previously come from a consulting company uh, where I was a DevOps engineer. Uh, I can't tell you all the clients I worked for because I'm not a secret, but it was fun. But I always found OpenStreetMap a lot more fun. And uh, I used to sneak away and do OpenStreetMap and look after the servers. And eventually it got to the point where I couldn't keep doing both. And the foundation was very kind and they, they hired me back in May. So I've be, been a full-time employee of the OpenStreetMap Foundation since May. Uh, I don't do it alone, though. Uh, we've got a small team. Uh, there's myself. There's Tom Hughes, who you may have met. Can say hello. Uh, we've all, also got a guy called Paul Norman, who who's, uh, helps with a lot of the planning, and he looks after some of the tile infrastructure. And then we have others who, who help us quite regularly, like Guillaume, Guillaume joins our weekly, call, our fortnightly calls, which I'll mention later, and helps out. And we have a lot of other people that help us out based on individual projects or their particular interests and in open source things that they, they work on. Uh, we have a website where we try to document the actual operations and planning behind the project called operations.osmfoundation.org. Oh. Sorry, that's why I'm blinded by the light. But uh, I'll, men I'll mention that uh, more in more detail. Uh, this is a photograph from a few years ago. Uh, and Andy Allen is, is there who, who, who hasn't given a talk this year, or has he? A Andy's a lovely guy to speak to about what, where is OpenStreetMap going to. He also runs a consulting company. But that was a planning session for us a few years ago. Uh, probably planning a new database server upgrade to keep pace with all you lovely mappers. Uh, but the main service that we run uh, for OpenStreetMap is surprisingly, unsurprisingly, the main website. So uh, OpenStreetMap.org, www. Uh, it, it's sometimes called the Rails port, technically. Uh, it, it's developed in a framework called Ruby on Rails. Uh, there's two maintainers of the project. Andy Allen, who I mentioned, uh, and then there's Tom Hughes again, who's dual role between uh, running, being a developer behind the Rails port and a operations uh, member. And then we have some hidden magic that makes the website faster for editing. So we have a piece of code called CGI Map, which is a C++ uh, app 
that does optimized API calls to speed up the, the performance of the website. So uh, a few years ago, we implemented that, and you could notice how, how much quicker the API was. Uh, Ruby on Rails is absolutely great for building websites, and um, many of the websites around the world are developed using it, but we needed a bit more performance for the API. So we use a piece of custom developed code called uh, CGI Map. But we run a huge number of things as part of the operations team. I'm going to go through each one of these individually. Well, no, no. Uh, no, but we have things like, uh, as was mentioned in the previous talk, uh, uh, Q just talk, there's a, a nominatum service, which is a geocoder uh, developed by Sarah Hoffman, or she's the, the maintainer for the last uh, many years. Uh, very popular service, and we have to control, and there's tag info that we run, and there's tile services and render servers and, and planets, generation files, and blog blogs, and there's a huge amount of things which I've mentioned, and there's only a very small number of us. So how the hell do we do that? Uh, well, we distribute it over quite a bit of hardware. We, we're probably not the most efficient in squeezing things onto the lowest amount of hardware. It's easier for us to stick one service per server. It's something we're discussing, but uh, we have 55 servers in three different data centers. So we have our own rack of servers in Ireland. We have another rack of servers in the UK. And then our primary data center is in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And uh, if you access www.openstreetmap or the API, that's where you're going to. Uh, and we have a failover site in Dublin. So if, if we ever had a disaster, we've got a fully replicated site across in Dublin, and we can f fail across to that. Uh, we also run this uh, hardware.osmfoundation.org, and what that does is it generates uh, automatic uh, list and specification for all the servers that we run, uh, which is very handy for us to refer back to things. It's almost like an asset control list. Uh, and we do all of the management and pulling of data out from all these servers using a thing called Chef. So if you're from uh, DevOps background, you may have heard of Chef. It's not the coolest and hippest tool out there anymore, but uh, it, it works well for us. We, uh, so effectively, Chef is our secret source of how we manage all these things. So when we uh, add a new service or we improving a service, we all the code that we do for that, or the configuration for that, goes into a Git repo, which I've listed here, OpenStreetMap Chef. And uh, we have all the code that manages all those services there. But then there's, of course, a backlog of work or fixes or improvements or technical things that we have to do. And uh, we also use GitHub for that. We use GitHub issues on another project called uh, OpenStreetMap Operations and yeah, forward slash issues. Uh, so if you want to see you know, what's in our head at any one time, it's probably in there. And my workload is managed primarily th through the tickets there. And we have other ways that the foundation has of prioritizing my work and uh, possibly influencing some of the things that I might be working on. Uh, and then very important to this being able to manage servers at scale is uh, we have to know what's happening, are the servers overloaded, what metrics, is a hard drive burning out, and we need alerting if something is going wrong. So we used to use a tool called Munin. Uh, it's not the best tool in the world anymore. It's very uh, one view of the world. We've switched to Prometheus, which is a pretty good tool. And we've got a public URL that you can go to and look at all our lovely metrics and figure out which is our oldest hard drive and see the performance metrics and how many users we have hitting different APIs and how many calls and requests we're doing. Another part of Prometheus is a tool called Alert Manager, which by its name does the management of the alerts. And uh, thanks to uh, PagerDuty, a commercial company sponsoring their alerting service, uh, we're going to be plugging that into, into Prometheus and Alert Manager so that uh, if, if we had a major outage or some service disruption, I'd be able to get a decent notification on a, effectively a pager device or modern pager device uh, telling me, you know, there's a service. Uh, so 
we'll have an out of hours team possibly uh, of me <laughs> to, to fix things if dare anything go wrong. Uh, thankfully, we've, we've worked quite well to keep the reliability of OpenStreetMap right up there over the last few years. Uh, I think our, our total uptime is three nines, so that's 99.9% .9 of the time we're up and running. And for the main website, it's even higher, so 99.99. So that's a couple of... Uh, then our biggest used service is uh, tile.openstreetmap.org. So if you've looked at OpenStreetMap, the default rendering of the website, the, sorry, the map data on openstreetmap.org, sometimes called uh, Mapnik, it's also called Osim Carto. Uh, I think Osim Carto is the settled name, that's what we meant to call it, but uh, we, don't, we don't always. Uh, the technology behind it is, is a piece of tech called Mapnik. Uh, we used to, until last year, we ran our own CDN network or content distribution network for this tile, tile network. So we used to get people donating random servers all over the world, and we would build, put software on them to run this tile.openstreetmap service, and it was a real, real pain. So p random people on the internet giving you lovely servers in strange locations, uh, <laughs> it became a massive, massive burden. Uh, and servers would go up or the hardware of the servers were, was all different and it used to suck up a lot of our time. Uh, thankfully, we, uh, Fastly was very kind to, to sponsor us and we now run our content distribution network or cache for our tile.openstreetmap.org service through Fastly. So if you see the map or you've got one of the where you've got QGIS and you download OpenStreetMap's default rendered style, uh, it, it's running through a Fastly CDN, which we've set up and manage. Uh, and it does a huge amount of ba bandwidth or, or traffic. So it does uh, 32 terabytes a day at, at over three gigabits, which is around three gigabits per second. And that's 2.5 billion requests a day. So it's very, very, very active. And uh, we continue to scale at an enormous rate on that. The growth is pretty extreme because OpenStreetMap run the service, it's open to ev everyone. We have a fairly simple usage policy on it that ev anyone is free to use it. You have to t tell us who you are basically, uh, who you're using it through the headers that you request. But if, you do, if you're a funky developer and you want to show some latest thing on a map, you just use tile.openstreetmap.org. There's no special requirements. Uh, and the long tail of users for that service is massive. Uh, <laughs> we have military uh, organizations all over the world that use it. We have private organizations. We have taxi companies. We have, the list is huge. Uh, and thankfully, we have Fastly that are very kind in sponsoring that CDN for us. Uh, going on to some of the things that we're improving in OpenStreetMap, so some of the future and current things that we're doing. Uh, one of the bugbears in OpenStreetMap that we've had a long time is uh, you would log into the, the main OpenStreetMap.org website, and you've got a username there, and, and everything's fine. But you go to the wiki, it's got a completely different username. And we've slowly uh, developed some of the tech that we need to be able to do what's effectively called single sign-on. So it's not quite OAuth 2, I can see Tom grimacing, but uh, we community.openstreetmap.org, now if you log in, it's completely seamless. You click log in, it takes you to, through to openstreetmap.org, and if you're already logged into openstreetmap.org, it just takes you straight back. So that's quite, quite a cool service. We're expanding that to the wiki fairly soon. Uh, we'd love some help if you're a media wiki developer. Uh, but mentioning uh, community.osem.org, what it is is it's a, basically a community forum. Uh, we'd like it to be a friendly, welcoming place for everyone, where different communities can discuss things in a nice, open fashion, where no single voice is much louder than any other. Uh, and hopefully, we're all uh, 
positive and have good communications there. But we plan to demise the old forum that, that we've been running for a number of years. The reason for that is the old forum is completely unsupported software now, and the features of that forum have not gone anywhere. But community.osm, multilingual, built-in translation for all posts. You can reply to foreign language posts with your language. Those language, your language can be translated to the other. It's a brilliant site. It also supports things that support a Q&A style uh, website. So help.osm is another piece of software which we run, which is dying and we need to move off. So we plan to move that also to community.osm.org. And then there's a lot of mailing lists which don't get very, which are not very active or mailing lists which would be better suited to running on community.osm.org. And we'd encourage you to sign up to community.osm.org, ask for a section there for your community and move across there. It's a lot more dynamic. Uh, you can have it in a pure email notification sense. So it's good for replacing mailing lists, as in you can subscribe to posts and you can get all the notifications from that. It works really well. So give it a try. Uh, one of the big announcements that we uh, hope to do is we are going to be doing vector tiles finally on osm.org. Uh, it's taken a lot of time for us to get to this point where we, we finally are getting to the point where we're ready to do it. So I mentioned we've got the old raster tiled at OpenStreetMap service, which is very heavy. Uh, but over the last few years, vector tiles have come a long way and there are open source projects that now support a lot of the requirements that we have for it. For example, the, the rendering library, uh, Mac, Map Libre has, has been absolutely brilliant. Uh, vector tiles are made of primarily three things. So there's a tile which has a schema inside of it, which is what is the data that is in that tile. We need help from the community or projects that exist to decide what we want to put in there. Uh, we've got a fair idea of what applications we'll use for generating those individual bits of data. We know how we'll distribute it. And then what you have is MapLibre does the styling and uh, or the rendering. So we need a community to come together to be responsible for the schema and the styling of those. And we encourage if you if that is an interest that you have, please come and get involved and help help influence the direction of vector tiles. Vector tiles run by OpenStreetMap is a pretty big thing because it means organizations could literally take our vector tiles or use them and present the map on their website in a very easy form, in the language that they want to, in the display style that they want to. It, it's hopefully quite an exciting thing and it will push OpenStreetMap's adoption quite a lot more and hopefully lower the burden of running billions and billions of tiles that we currently do and replace it with something that's a lot more scalable. But there's other things that I'm involved with and part of the operations team is. So this thing here, I love finding them. It's a, a survey beacon on the ground. I love going up to them, taking a photograph of them, but unfortunately they're in the middle of the road. So a bus might hit me. Uh, so it's one of the things in OpenStreetMap, we've got a very small team. We need to increase the number of uh, people that are running the projects from the center. So increasing the bus factor of how many people have to leave the project to, <laughs> for it to continue running, we need people to get involved. Uh, I'm also working on reducing the single points of failure in the project, so network, database, redundancy, and things like that. Also reducing the complexity and some of the technical debt that we have in running the project. There's, there's always lots of those. And us being volunteers for such a long time, well, me being a volunteer for a long time and other people being involved, some of the technical debt stuff is hard to pay down. But now that I've got more time, uh, I hope to pay it down. Uh, and we're starting to rely on other organizations a lot more when it doesn't comp compromise our values for the project. Yeah. Which brings me on to Amazon Web Services. So uh, we've been accepted onto the AWS Open Data Sponsorship Program, which allows them to give us resources to do some things. Uh, one of which is we're going to be co-distributing the planets that are OpenStreetMap.org under their Open Data Program. It allows us to use some of their resources via sponsorship, which is absolutely great. 
but there's also lots of other potential of what we could do using cloud services, not necessarily Amazon's, but uh, other partners that we could work with and still maintain our independence, but being able to offer more things. One of, one of the things that interests me is, you know, I capture a lot of photographs when mapping, but I'd love to be able to share those photographs with other mappers. Does OpenStreetMap need a photo sharing service? I don't know, but using a cloud service could, could potentially do that. And there are other things that uh, the cloud providers, uh, platform as a service provider, and software as a service providers could potentially help us unlock. Uh, so we're always looking for more help. This is a very unfortunate picture of uh, Tom and uh, my colleague, Paul Norman, who's in Canada at the moment, not unfortunately at the conference. This is us moving servers to Amsterdam prior to Brexit. But uh, if you want to get involved with us and help us move servers or build out cloud services, uh, we have a video call every two weeks on a Thursday. Uh, we always in a uh, IRC channel or uh, webchat.oftc.net channel OSMF operations, or we've got the o OSM, we've got the operations website where you can read what we're doing. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Grant, not only for the talk, but also for the work you're doing together with Tom and the other people in the operations group. Um, there's really just one question that you haven't answered yes, yet uh, online, and someone wants to know whether any work is being done on um, converting existing forum communities onto the new system, because they were apparently quite astonished that the forum is still being used. Yeah, so the old forum, uh, we had someone who was helping us uh, test the migration of the old forum. He, uh, due to personal reasons, is no longer able to help us with that. So it's got delayed and it's in my priority list of items which I need to address to migrate the old forum. But I want, I, I care a lot about the long tail of data. So if you go to blog.osm.org, the very first blog post that ever existed from OSM is there and it's because I took an interest in keeping the data alive. And the forum I, I care about extremely as well. The forum posts from the start of the forum, I will make sure they get converted. So we'll get to it. Unfortunately, it's taken us much longer than, than we hoped for. Okay, are there any questions in the audience here? Yes and no, maybe, perhaps. Hi, um, I think that what you're doing is absolutely amazing and I, I, I'm sure it's very hard to, to do. Uh, the um, osm.org website has evolved in a way uh, with um, uh, ID, the ID editor evolving, the, which is, has massively uh, evolved, but the interface of the website itself um, could uh, evolve in a way um, to um, better fit either the needs of the contributors yeah. or be like a demo of what is OSM or address the needs of, of the developers or three of them. But I think that uh, it could be that we like uh, address more precisely these three kind of, uh, of public. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think the OSM.org, the presentation of what we are as a project is not brilliant. This, this big map, People think it, it's one thing, and it's, we're a lot more. We're a data project. We're, we're trying to become the data source of the world, the primary one, the best one. And the answer to that is we need a group of people who are UI experts or designers or people who can develop a new style and look and come to us with a proposal and possibly even develop some of that. As a technical group, we will happily uh, evaluate it and, and see if it can be done. But uh, I think we need proposals for what it could be like. And it's hard to get a community to change, but I think it has to happen at some stage. So yes, I'm, I'm absolutely in favor of it. how it gets done. It needs a group of people to effectively come forward with a proposal or a new group in the project to start up with, you know, what should OSM.org look like? 
and take it to uh, Andy Allen and Tom Hughes once it's a developed proposal and has more acceptance. And not kill OpenStreetMap. Uh, so, uh, regarding, uh, because the topic was also on the future of uh, OpenStreetMap, and uh, comparing it to like Google Maps where you have everything inside and you can also like create your own, uh, like save your own uh, points of interest or things like that. So let's say like I'm traveling here, I, I use like Google Maps to put all of the points of like where is the hotel and other things. Would this be something on the radar to make OSM um, be kind of more useful uh, in this kind of senses? Like directly, we instead because yeah, we can use OSM and or maps that meet that other stuff, but directly the OSM that over go. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's a fairly tough question. It's not really a question for me to answer at all. Is what who is OpenStreetMap.org for? The OSM.org, the website, and I think that's a community discussion or maintainers of the Railsport discussion, or it's quite a wide discussion of who who are we targeting. Uh, I. My biased opinion is we need to target the mappers, uh, and there are lots of applications. I, I particularly like organic maps, which has those features that you, you've mentioned. But uh, it's a discussion point, I think, and not for me to answer. Um, uh, this is not really a question, but uh, I am figured out uh, today. I, I knew that we, we were doing an incredible job, but it's really much more that uh, I could even expect. And I think uh, all of us, uh, we are doing our fancy stuff with OpenStreetMap uh, because of you. I think really you, you would deserve, uh, I mean, a standing ovation. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> thank you thank you it, it's it's not just it's it's not just me i must no, say no, i that mean that. you and the the wool group and all yeah. the and, 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 and the tom and paul and the other people yes. that get involved and we're always sure, looking sure. for more help uh if you've got if you if you're interested in maps and you've got the technical side or or the planning side or the development side we'd, we'd love to hear from you Last question from the room, and then we have to move on. Yeah, uh, with all this modernization, is there any plan to move away from IRC, or is that a bridge too far? So, so us as the technical group, we are very familiar with open, uh, IRC, and that's our preferred communication channel. And I use Matrix on top of that, and there's different clients for that. Uh, Possibly we can move more of the communication to community.osm.org or other channels that are more open to other people. But yeah, uh, it's what we, we've worked with for a long time and it's what we're most comfortable with. Uh, should we move to Telegram? Possibly not. <laughs> but <laughs> One last question from the online audience. <clears throat> the, you mentioned earlier that uh, people should get, uh, people should get in touch when they want to contribute to the vector tile thingy what would be the is that what working group or what whom should they talk to where where should they get in touch so uh i i thought about that question bef before uh possibly contact the operations group and we'll we'll set up something or we'll announce it via the osm underscore tech uh twitter account when we're planning to have it and get people to join in. So, so follow uh, OSM underscore tech on Twitter, and we'll announce it once we've got some more established plans. Otherwise, email me or uh, possibly Dorothea, who will ask for help uh, organize the thing. So uh, yeah, that's it. OK, thank you again.